Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the latest and greatest changes to CMU Emulator in its latest release version. This version is titled 121.3 and believe me, it comes with a really, really cool fix for one of my favourite games on this emulator, as well as a pretty substantial graphical fix for a graphical effect namely being anistotropic filtering for some of your favourite games on this Wii U emulator. Now first and foremost, let's get release dates out of the way. This version is always released for CMU patrons, so if you are one, check your email or head on over to patreon.com and download the latest build. If you are not a patron supporter, this, as per usual, is going to release on the coming Friday, the 9th of October, so as usual, all you need to do is check for updates on that day or enable the auto-updating feature built into CMU Emulator. If you don't know how any of this works, you can find my complete setup guide for this emulator linked down in this video's description. My latest guide went live only a few days ago, so if you're looking to get the best possible performance in many of your favourite games, that guide is going to show you how to achieve it. Okay, so for this 121.3 version, we have a few changes, those namely being some general changes, changes to graphics packs, then we have some updates to the OpenGL and Vulkan API renderers that we're also going to be taking a look at. Okay, as per usual, we're going to start from the very top of these changes and work our way down, starting things off with our one and only general change, where CMU's logging is now going to use your local system time instead of UTC like it did before. Realistically, this isn't going to make any difference to you, the user's life, but at least in relation to people who debug issues on emulators like myself and others over on Discord, it may come in handy in the future. Moving swiftly along, we have the awesome AF changes which I spoke of both in this video's title and earlier on in the video. In these latest graphics pack changes, graphics packs can now overwrite the level of anistotropic filtering for individual textures. These new anistotropic filtering options can be set to 1x, 2x, 4x, 8x or 16x and if you set it to 16x, unlike previously in the past when setting it in either your AMD or Nvidia control panels, it does not cause horrible graphical issues like could happen with those. For example, something that I have tried out in the past is forcing 16x anistotropic filtering in the Nvidia control panel and then I tried to play a game I play a ton on this emulator and most of you probably do, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In that game, previously, if you forced anistotropic filtering, in certain areas of gameplay, a horrible black shadow would follow you around the map, basically ruining the gameplay experience and, for the most part, negating the actual point of enabling anistotropic filtering. Now, I can talk about AF all day, or I could just show you what it does. To do this, I'm going to use The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This first image is with anistotropic filtering disabled in the graphics packs, and if we transition from off to on, pay close attention to all of the textures on the ground behind, to the sides, and off in the distance in front of Link. For anybody who doesn't know what AF or anistotropic filtering does, it basically makes textures that appear at angles to the viewport appear much, much more clearer than they do at lower texture anistotrophy values. You can see in this side-by-side -side shot with the image zoomed in just how much clearer the textures are. Please, if you're using or watching this video at a much lower resolution, try to bump it up to the highest resolution available just so that you can see how much clearer this anistotropic filtering graphics pack makes The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and any other game that now has added support for this new graphics pack functionality. At the time of making this video, the only games that I have seen with these anistotropic filtering graphics packs are The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Bayonetta 2 and Splatoon, though I do expect even more games than these to have support for this new graphics pack functionality in the coming days and weeks. In respect to Bayonetta 2, we've also gotten some pretty awesome graphics pack fixes in relation to that game's graphics. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment, but first, let's go over the rest of the OpenGL and Vulcan changes also coming in 121.3. First up, they have re-added the texture dumping support 
On top of this feature now being re-added to the emulator, it also now dumps to .tga files instead of .bnp. This change has been made to allow for texture transparency support. Next up, they have fixed a bug in CMU's shader decompiler. This bug is in relation to translating shadow sampler instructions. This fix solves a shadow rendering bug in Super Mario 3D World, and while no other games have been noted in CMU's changelog for 121.3, other games may be affected, so if you've ever had any shadow related problems in any games on CMU, please test them out on this new version if you have access to it already or when it releases and see if they are now fixed. The final change, well, actual change that is in code for this new CMU release, fixes an issue where anisotropic filtering would not be enabled if it was set to a value below 4x. In the patch notes, it says that this slightly improves the default terrain quality in Breath of the Wild, though to be honest I'm not sure if that's just referring to what anisotropic filtering does, since as I showed earlier on, that's exactly what a setting like this accomplishes. Now while I said that is the final change coming in CMU's code as of 121.3, that doesn't mean that's the final change coming with this version around its release time. So do you notice anything different in this gameplay of Bayonetta 2? If you've never played this game before, or if it's not one that you commonly play, you may not notice it, but Bayonetta 2 now has rendered dynamic shadows thanks to the implementation of a brand new graphics pack fix in CMU 121.3. To explain exactly what's happening, I'm going to read a small excerpt given to us by the developers of CMU. On a side note, we were able to track down Bayonetta 2's missing shadow issue thanks to Rodrigo from the Yuzu team greatly for helping us with this. Since a proper solution for this issue will take a while to implement, we have released this new workaround graphics pack as a temporary solution. Having played this game for about 1 to 2 hours, maybe a little bit under 2 hours, this graphics pack is working pretty fantastically. The game is rendering awesome, and while I can't really say if it's fully playable now on CMU, I can say that it is now rendering better than ever before, something I know a lot of you are going to be very, very happy with for this emulator release. As I said earlier, it's going to be released to everyone for free on Friday the 9th of October, and as I also said, if you're looking for the best settings for any of these games shown, you'll find them in my full and complete setup guide, a link to which you can find down in this video's description. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video guys. As always, thank you very very much for checking it out, I greatly greatly appreciate your viewership. If you enjoy these videos and would like to help support me and my channel, you can find a link to my Patreon down in this video's description. Any and all pledges are greatly appreciated. And as per usual, if you need any help with anything, don't be afraid to ask me down below in the comment section or indeed over on my Discord server, again a link to which you'll find down in this video's description. Before I go, again thank you all very much for watching the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.